Hey, how you doing? Mike here, The Fresh Rinse. Oh man, we finally got a beautiful day in the 50s. Hard to believe here in January in 2023. And we are continuing the 2023 complete pressure washing rig rebuild. And today we're gonna to begin part one of the electrical. So don't go anywhere. All right, we are back. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't already hit the like button and the subscribe button, would you mind doing that? Leave a comment, ask questions. I'm super grateful. Here's where we're at. Today, we are going to fire up both the eight gallon a minute machine and the 10 gallon a minute machine. Now, I must say this. The reason we're breaking this up into at least more than one video on the subject of electricity is because there's just so much content here. So today, again, we're gonna fire up the eight gallon a minute machine and the 10 gallon a minute machine. In a future video, we're going to fire up both sets of reels. And then in a third video, we're going to do the small things such as the Flow Pro and the 12 volt uh, soft wash system. So all of that will be in a total of three different videos. Let me show you where we're at today. All right, I'm doing this somewhat unrehearsed, so I have things laid out here, and I'm just gonna make a quick run through of our tools and supplies. This is what you'll need to simply get your machines fired up to a battery. Of course, off camera, we have a battery, a 12 volt marine battery. We'll see that here in a few moments. For our cables or wire, we have eight gauge wire that I got from the big box store using these booster cables, excuse me. And again, that's eight gauge wire. Then we have lugs that we'll be using at the end of all of the wires, plus the shrink wrap covers that will go and help protect that. We'll be using our propane and solder to connect those lugs to the wires. The vice grips will come in place of a vice. I have a vice, but again, I'm showing everyone how to do this with minimal tools. So if you don't have a vice, vice scripts will work. I actually have a pair of electrical pliers in route as we speak. Um, so no digs, please. Uh, for the time being, just going to cut the wires with a blade. I have a two and a quarter inch hole saw attached to my 20 volt drill, and I'll be using this rubber grommet it's two inch rubber grommet uh, on the back side of the box here and uh, the rubber grommet of course protects any of the wires that'll be and cables that will be coming through they will be attached to this 100 amp circuit breaker i actually have three more in route and so this one i will be using today but in the upcoming videos, I will replace this one with the new one. Basically the same thing, but I like uniformity. I've got some uh, cable clamps here to help guide the cables on the outside of the box. Of course, I have uh, some, oops, I have some lubricant, uh, antioxidant compound for the cables. And then I have some self-tapping screws. Of course, last but not least, I've got some labels to label the uh, cables when we're done. My first point of interest is to locate where I want to put both my hole for my cables and my 100 uh, amp breaker. Obviously, anywhere above the battery will work. Now, the reason I want to go above the battery is because if ever I want to maintenance this for any reason, I really don't wanna to have to take out the battery in order to do it. So having it above the battery allows that to work better for me. So I have located a good spot here for the hole, which will allow all of my cables to run through. This is a two inch grommet. And so I need a two and one fourth inch hole to fit the grommet. To remove any of the burrs that come as a result of the hole saw, I'm choosing to use this angle iron with a cutoff blade. The 
because I have so much room on the back side of the machine, I'm going to insert the grommet from the back side as opposed to kind of finagling it from the inside. All right, so this is what it looks like from the back side. I will simply use a blade to cut and slice through the middle of the grommet, and this will allow for a fairly waterproof um, grommet here for wires to pass through. And because I know someone is gonna ask, I purchased these two inch grommets I think five in a pack from Amazon for about $10. And now's a good time to clean up the mess that was left behind from the whole saw. so I've located a good spot for my 100 amp breaker. This will solely operate my eight gallon a minute machine. You'll notice that I have it upside down and that's because I want to mount it in this way so that I have a good clearance for all of my wires. My battery is labeled right here and then this post is for the eight gallon a minute machine. I purchased three of these off Amazon for $26 and uh, those three are in route. I'm using this one temporarily. It came from my old box. Off camera, I installed this lug onto the end of my cable. I'll show you how I do that. And uh, this would be a, a nice pro tip for someone who's never done this before. This is the wire that I'll be using to connect the battery to the uh, 100 amp breaker. I purchased this pack of lugs from Amazon for about $14, $15, something like that. And it has a variety of lugs with uh, the shrink wrap sleeves as well. For the sake of the video, I'm using vice grips. As I said earlier, I actually have a vice on the rig that I use regularly. Some of you may not, just know that vice grips will work. The process is super simple. I will simply heat up the lug, apply the solder, put the cable down into the solder, wait for about a minute for it to cool off, and then I'll put my shrink wrap housing over top of the lug and the wire and then apply more heat. I apologize for the wind and the shakiness of the camera. It's uh, quite boisterous today using biblical terminology. Don't forget always put your um, shrink wrap over the cable before you start otherwise you'll never get it over the lug. All right, it's been about a minute and off camera, I removed a little bit of solder that had spilled out. I will now put the shrink wrap over top of the lug and the uh, cable. It may take a little bit of finagling there. I like for it to be completely over the cable and the lug with just a little bit of room there. Applying heat much. Perfect. All right, let's see what we've got. So we have the battery installed and I have the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. This negative runs all the way back to the machine. This hot wire runs to the breaker from the machine and then from the breaker to the battery. As you can see here, it is currently in the off position. 
So simply push the tab down, that puts it in the on position, that takes it to the off position. So in on position, let's see if we have power. We do. And we have 1,965.2 hours on the eight gallon a minute machine. Now, of course, I do not have the fuel hooked up to the machine, nor do I have water. But at this point, we can see that the machine does work and we are good to go. Now, let's hook up the 10 gallon a minute machine to the uh, designated battery. And before we do that, I just wanna show you behind the box, what I've done here is I have attached the cables to the box using self-tapping screws and the appropriate clamps. It runs under the frame and then back to the machine. I have several zip ties here in different locations to secure those wires. When I bought this 10 gallon a minute machine, it did not come with a battery. And that didn't bother me any because originally I had assumed I would just run the wiring back to the main battery. Because I was in a hurry, I went ahead and bought a separate battery, which I'm gonna use this time as well. The problem is the lugs that come with the, um, with the machine are for a much smaller battery, like a lawnmower type of battery. And so the lug will not fit, it's just too small. So I have the appropriate size lugs. I will now cut these to fit, apply the new lugs, and we should be good to go. Okay, so I have the cables hooked to the battery using the proper sized lugs, and uh, we should have power. Let's see what we've got. All right, here we go. Yes. And we have 130 hours on the 10 gallon a minute machine. And there you have it. We now have power to both the eight machine and the 10 machine. If we had water and fuel, we'd be ready to wash. In the next episode, we will be connecting all four hose reels to the main battery and uh, we'll be good to go with those as well. All we're waiting on is the other two 100 amp fuse panels to, to show up or the breakers to show up and we'll be good to go. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, hit the bell tab if you'd like to be alerted to future videos and be sure and leave a comment. If I've missed something and you need a, an answer, you have a question, let me know. I'll be doing my best to fill in all the blanks because that's what I do. All right. My name's Mike. They call me the Fresh Rinse and I'm out.